Guys, what's going on? I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are staying safe. Guys, I've just seen an article from Baba Aram and he said we tried to make the Manny Pacquiao fight. And unfortunately, uh, you know, there was a lot of money there in Dubai. I think where they were going to take it, it was Qatar or Dubai. Uh, I can't remember which country he just, just said. I think it might have been Dubai. And he said there was a lot of money there. And unfortunately, at the last minute, it broke down. And the pandemic and... You know, it just it just we just couldn't get we just couldn't get it through over the line, and then Manny Pacquiao's gone and and you know chose to fight Errol Spence. You know what? I really I know a lot of you guys give Terence Crawford a lot of stick, and you say he doesn't fight anybody, and you know his his resume is not great. You know what? I really feel for Terence Crawford. I really really feel for Terence Crawford. The guy. Um, has his promoter, who's supposed to be promoting him, saying he don't sell. It's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this. This guy's got a pound for pound fighter in his hand in Aram, and he's literally ripping Terence Crawford, saying he don't sell. Um, unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, and I've never. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. I don't think I've seen a pound for pound star or a guy that's supposed to be up there be criticised by his promoter the way Crawford is by Bob Arum. Normally, they're like, you know, look at Eddie Earn, even though Joshua's not a pound-for-pound -pound star, but obviously he's a cash cow. And Canelo, and, you know, look at the way they were promoted in the sense that, you know, their promoters were like literally, you know, oh, Canelo's this, AJ's that, or Pacquiao's this and that. And look at the way Aaron was with Pacquiao. That's because he was making a lot of money. Unfortunately, with Terence Crawford, he isn't making that kind of money. So he doesn't really look at Crawford as a prize asset. He looks at him as more a burden. Or maybe he just knows that he knows that Crawford is going to go. That's why he's talking the way he is. He's, talk he's talking about Crawford as if you would for as, as a rival promoter. He's talking about Crawford the way you would do about Crawford as if he was a rival. It's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. And you know what? It's not just Crawford. As the way Bob spoke about Tiafimo when... Tiafimo, uh, you know, went to Triller, uh, or or Triller, uh, you know, bought the purse, but he was like, "Yeah, we'll take our nice nine hundred grand cut." I was like, "Wow, these guys are really these, you know, Bob Arum's really, I don't know, I don't know what's up with Arum uh, acting like that." But I feel for Terence Crawford because when's Terence Craw Terence Crawford gonna get his break? He must be seething inside. I know, I know, he he probably on top or with it when if he's interviewed says he don't care. But inside, he must be seething because Errol Spence now, who's his rival, has now fought Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, Mikey Garcia, uh, you know, and now he's going to fight Manny Pacquiao. And Terence Crawford can't get himself a break. Um, it's, it's a difficult, difficult, it must be difficult for Terence Crawford seeing all of that. It must be difficult for Terence Crawford because, like I said, his promoter has given up on him. It looks like it. That's what it looks like. Um, it doesn't look like his promoter is willing to put up crazy money because he's thinking, I'm losing. Because I think he put up good money when he fought Khan. And unfortunately, the pay-per-view flopped. It did 150,000 pay-per-view buys, but that's a flop, really, when you think about it. And it didn't really live up to what they thought it would live up. And then, obviously, the other fights that he's had with Kavi Alaskas and Kel Brook, unfortunately, they didn't do big numbers and they weren't even on pay-per-view, but they still aren't doing big numbers. So, unfortunately for Crawford, he's in a situation right now that he just doesn't sell like you would expect a pound-for-pound -pound fighter to sell. And in order for Bob Arum and those guys to put it on pay-per-view for it to really make sense, they need to fight a superstar like a Manny or need to have a fight with Spence. That's the only way they're going to be able to make a lot of money. And with Sean Porter, that's another fight. Sean Porter, believe it or not, is not a huge name. And what I mean by that, yeah, he's a very credible fight. Yeah. But is he going to move the needle on pay-per-view? I don't think he is. I don't think Terence Crawford v. Sean Porter does three, four hundred or 500,000 pay-per-view buys. What people don't understand. 
People think, yeah, Sean Porter is more credible credible than anyone Terence Crawford has fought so far. But the problem is, how much more is it going to do? So, for example, Khan Crawford did 150,000 pay-per-view buys. How much more is Terence Crawford v. Sean Porter going to do? Think about it, guys. Sean Porter is not a huge pay-per-view attraction. He's not. So how much more do you think that pay-per-view is going to do? 200, 250? And even then, it doesn't make sense for the money that Sean Porter and Terence want. Do you understand? Because it's about business in the sense that if, if Bob Aaron pays Terence Crawford what he wants and Sean Porter what he wants, Sean Porter is going to want at least two, two and a half million, three million dollars. That's what I'd like to think, right? Terence Crawford is going to want his usual four to six million range that he gets, right? That's a lot of money, right? If the pay-per-view is going to not, you know, it's not going to, is going to bomb like it did has done previously, then, you know, you're, you're not going to get, you're not going to get a, um, you're going to lose money. And that's what I think Bob Aram is referring to, that we've been losing money and ESPN has been losing money and they're not, they're not willing to keep putting the money up if they're going to keep losing. Because when you have a star attraction or when you have a pound for pound fire, usually they're making you money because there's a lot of eyes, there's a lot of eyes on the on the you know on, on the fight and the, the people are buying the pay-per-view. Unfortunately with Crawford, his promotion has been so bad, he's not really been promoted great, and there's not enough eyes on 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 the on the fight, on his fights. And he's not doing huge pay-per-view numbers, uh, and he's not a big star like he should be for a pound for pound star. Um, and it's sad, really, because that's probably holding him back. Whereas on the other side, Errol Spence, who's his rival, is growing. His brand is growing. And if he beats Manny Pacquiao, his brand is going gonna, is gonna to grow even bigger. Because the pop, the, the, that fight, the tension around Manny Pacquiao v. Errol Spence is huge, right? So he's gonna, if he wins that fight, he's going to result as a... He's going to, again, his brand and his name and his reputation, his star appeal is going to grow, Right? So then it's going to be even harder to make that fight because then Errol Spence will say, hang on a minute, look at my resume, look at your resume, look at the pay-per-view numbers that I've done. Because listen, Errol Spence v. Manny Pacquiao could do 500,000 pay-per-views plus. Errol Spence could make 10 million, more than 10 million plus in that fight. So I honestly then start thinking that Errol Spence then is going to have a rightful claim to a higher split than Terence Crawford because he's going to have three, he's, he may have three belts. Well, you know, he may not even fight Crawford after that. He may fight he may fight Ugas for the other belt, which again may grow his brand further. Uh and then it'll just be impossible to make that fight. And that's what I'm worried about as a boxing fan. I'm worried that we may not get to see the Crawford Spence fight due to the fact that I think Spence's brand and reputation and and he you know his pay-per-view status is gonna grow so much and Terence Crawford is gonna you know, stay stay stagnant or stay where he is now, and the levels between the two will be so massive that, and the the revenue that both guys will be generating that will be so big. Uh, but you know, the difference between the two guys will be so big that unfortunately, uh, we're not going to be able to get that fight because when you look at that fight and look at what both guys have done, it is fifty fifty. However, it may not be fifty fifty now. You may have to look at it and say, no, Spence is the cash cow. Spence is the biggest star. Spence does deserve the biggest split. You may have to, you may have to say that because if Spence is earning, what, 15, 16 million against Pacquiao and, Spe and Crawford's earning 5 million, it's hard to say it's a 50-50 split. It's hard to make a case for Terence Crawford getting a 50-50 split in that. And like I said, I was always for a 50-50 split. I was always for a 50-50 split, but... Unfortunately, the Spence might surpass Crawford and then he'll have more belts. He'll have the better resume, better resume in terms of wins on his record. I just think that I just think that Terence Crawford, if he wants that fight, may have to give in for Spence to get a higher split and be the A side. But I don't think I think Terence Crawford's a man of principle. I can't see Terence Crawford saying I'm, not, I'm, I'm taking 60 40. I can't see it. You know, Terence Crawford isn't going to accept anything less than a 50-50 split, which isn't going to make the fight, unfortunately. Is that I don't think we'll ever get to see that fight. Because Terence Crawford isn't going to be willing to take anything less than 50-50 because it's not about... It's about Terence Crawford believing he's a champion, believing that, you know, I'm, I'm undefeated three-weight world champion. 
Uh, I need to be respected. I'm a star. But unfortunately, Errol Spence now is, is surpassing Crawford in terms of reputation, brand, his name, um, and also resume. He's, he's surpassed Crawford. Like, in terms of his resume, Spence's resume is starting to become thick. His resume is starting to become very, very, you know, credible. Uh, and if he was to dethrone Manny Pacquiao or beat Manny Pacquiao, then I think it, it becomes a case where even someone like myself, who always thought is a 50-50, will start saying, you know what? Terence Crawford may have to take the smallest slice of the cake because Errol Spence is, is growing massively and he's a way bigger star and way bigger than Crawford now. And unfortunately, I think Crawford may have to, may have to give that up. But I just don't see the reason why. That's why I don't see that fight happening because I don't see Terence Crawford saying that I'm gonna take sixty. Or I'm gonna. I'll take sixty. I'll take the forty percent. I don't see Crawford doing that because Crawford, like I said, I just said he's he's a champion. He's got an ego. He, you know, he prides in what he's done, and rightfully so. But just the fact of the matter is that I don't think Errol Spence is gonna to want to do a fifty-fifty split unless Errol Spence wants to be undisputed really bad and he says give him a fifty-fifty split which very few fighters are in the sense that I think for fighters, it's more about business. However, who knows? I think, I think if Errol Spence does do that and does say 50-50, then you have to commend him because really, I don't think the fight would be... I don't think if you look at their rev, the revenue both guys are... or the, jet, the interest both guys are generating, the revenue both guys are making and the reputation, the brand of both fighters now, you'd have to say that really Terence Crawford doesn't deserve a 50-50 split. Even though I was always, I'm the, I've always been campaigning for Terence Crawford to get a 50-50 split. But as of right now, Spence is growing massively and his star is building fast, whereas Terence Crawford is staying stagnant. And that's because of the, re that's because of the guys that Terence Crawford is fighting. Unfortunately, a lot of those guys are past their best or... They they were never classed as any great fighters, so that's who Terence Crawford has been fighting in the welterweight division. And until Terence Crawford fights a Sean Porter, fights a Keith Thurman, fight. See, the thing is, I don't understand why the Keith Thurman fight can't be made. Keith Thurman, where who is in who in the Who Needs Me Club? Spence has already stated he is not going to fight Keith Thurman. Why don't Bob Aaron? But the pro again, it comes down to how big is the Terence Crawford Keith Thurman fight. This is what people, this is what we've got to understand. How big is it? Now, they're talking about Terence Crawford and Josh Taylor. How big is that fight? It's not a big pay-per-view fight. Josh Taylor is not a big paper or is going to be a fight where that's going to do over 200, 300,000. It's not going to go anywhere close. Does it even do the numbers that Khan fight did? I don't think it does. Which is a damn shame, but it's the truth. And unfortunately... Terence Crawford's in a situation where he needs a marquee American welterweight fighter, like a Porter, like a Thurman. But again, even Sean Porter and Keith Thurman, I don't know how big they are. So really, Terence Crawford's at the stage now where he needs a super fight. And I don't even know whether Josh Taylor, Sean Porter or Keith Thurman fit the bill for that. When I mean super fight, I mean people, I mean you might be talking a Ker Errol Spence, a Manny Pacquiao. A guy of that nature, maybe a Jamal, maybe a Jamel Charlo. He maybe needs something like that now. Otherwise, I don't think ESPN and Bob Arum are going to generate the revenue that they want or they expect from a fight of that magnitude. Right? And I think that's just what it is. And it's a sad state of affairs because I like Terence Crawford. I think he's a very skilled fighter. But unfortunately for me, his career... Is kind of stagnant right now. He needs he needs those big names. He needs those big fights. Otherwise, you know, he's getting older. He's nearly 33, probably going on 34. When's he going to get those big defining fights? You know, you'd say 34 is starting to get old in boxing. You're starting to get onto the other side. I know with today's technology and science and all of that, that, you know, fighters can go on longer. But still, it's, a human body is a human body. It doesn't matter with what science technology we got today. You know, a fighter can only go as long as he can go. Um, a body can only go as long as it can, it can go. You know, science isn't going to get a guy back in his prime. I still think even in today's time, a guy going 34, going 34 to 36 is, for me, getting old and getting past his prime. But let's see. On the other hand, you can say Crawford hasn't had a lot of miles on the clock. You know, his fights haven't been that taxing or he hasn't been in through brutal war. So, you know, maybe that would help him, you know, but he needs to get a move on. 
Leave your thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And guys, remember to please like, share and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.